The following video will explain a topic that involves algebraic fractions and sometimes quadratic equations. Do bear in mind this is a very complicated topic, it's high level A star work. It can be the last question of a paper, five or six marks. So I'm going to try and guide you through this, show you how to do it, but it is difficult. Your algebra skills have to be to a high standard. So follow please and try the questions as I uh, suggest them. First type of algebraic fraction um, that might come up. I have this equation. x is equal to 6 divided by x plus 5. It's an algebraic fraction because on the left right hand side I have a fraction and there's an x in it. So I'm going to try and solve something like this. Rather like in the topic of thirds, mathematicians don't like x's on the denominator of fractions. So to remove this x plus 5, if I multiplied both sides of the equation by x plus 5, on the left hand side I still have my x and I'm multiplying it by x plus 5, and on the right hand side I just would be left with 6. That's because thinking about if I multiplied this by x plus 5, I could cancel the x plus 5's on top and bottom of the fraction and would leave me with 6. Now I'm going to expand the left hand side. x times x is x squared, x times 5 is 5x. And that is equal to 6. I've now formed myself a quadratic equation. I can't however solve these until I make one side of the equation equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 6 off both sides to make the right hand side 0 and I'll be left with on the left hand side x squared plus 5x minus 6. I've got a quadratic equal 0. I always try and factorise first, see if I can. Can I think of two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add up to 5? Well yes, I can choose the numbers 6 and minus 1 because 6 times minus 1 is minus 6 and 6 plus minus 1 is 5. So this factorises to x plus 6, x minus 1 equals 0. Two expressions multiplied to give 0 must mean either the first expression is 0 or the second is 0. So the solution is x is minus 6, x is equal to 1. Two solutions here. When you get your solution at the end, check back in the original equation that your answers work. If I substitute 1 in, I get 1 on the left hand side and 6 over 1 plus 5, which is 6 over 6 on the right, which is also 1. Put in minus 6, you will also see this works. OK, another example, just to go through the method one more time to show you what to do. I've got an algebraic fraction. That's because there's a fraction on the right-hand side with an x in it. And we've got an algebraic, we've in fact got an equation here. X is equal to 3 over 2x plus 5. I don't like x's on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2x plus 5. That will leave me. x multiplied by this 2x plus 5 is equal to 3. Expand out the left hand side. I'd get 2x squared plus 5x is equal to 3. I've got a quadratic equation. I can only solve it if I make one side equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides and I'm going to get 2x squared plus 5x. Subtract 3 and that is equal to 0. Now I'm going to try and factorise this. I'm not going to go through the long process of how to factorise this. You know how to do this. But it does factorise to 2x um, it factorises to 2x, uh, you would have in the second bracket x plus 3 and in the first bracket x, uh, 2x minus 1. That is equal to 0. Therefore, either 2x minus 1 is 0 or x is negative, uh, or x 
plus 3 is 0. So from this one, 2x is 1, x must be a half. And from this one, x must be equal to negative 3. They are my two solutions. If I substituted them back in, hopefully it will make the equation work. Let's put a half in. Put a half in the left-hand side, you get a half. Put a half over here. 2 times a half is 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. 3 over 6 is a half. Yes, that works. Put negative 3 in. You've got negative 3 on the left. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. 3 over negative 1 is negative 3. Again, I got the correct answer. I'm happy there. I'll, I want you to have a look at the next two questions on the next slide. I'd like you to have a go yourself, pause the video, have a go, and then I'll show you the answers. I will not go through them. I will show you the written answers for you to check your work, check you've written out correctly, check you got the right answer. Here we go. Please pause the video and have a go at these two questions. The answers are as follows. Okay, I'm going to move on now to probably the hardest aspect of algebra solving equations with algebraic fractions in them, and it comes up quite on, on quite a regular basis. This is the question I'm going to try and solve, and these types. 3 divided by x minus 2 plus 4 divided by x minus 1 is equal to 2. It's going to be quite complicated, so I want to start off by showing you an example with numbers that's similar to show you why the method with algebra also works. 3 divided by 7 plus 4 divided by 5. If I'm trying to work this out with a calculator, 3 sevenths plus 4 fifths. You can't add these currently as the units are different. If adding or subtracting fractions is your aim, make the denominators the same. I need to make the units the same with these fractions before I can add them. You ask yourself, well, what does 7 and 5 go into? And hopefully, uh, you'll realise that they go into 7 times 5, or 35. So you put your denominator as the product, that's the multiplication of the two numbers at the bottom. This first number, this 7, I had to multiply that by 5 to get 35. So I multiply the 3 by 5. This 5 here, I had to multiply that by 7 to get 35. So the 4, I must multiply by 7. And that's going to help us add things together. Let's just um, check here what I've actually done. Step 1, I multiplied the two bottom numbers together, that was step one. And they were, that was my common denominator. Step two, this four, I multiplied it, uh, sorry, this seven, I multiplied it by the four. This five, I multiplied it by the three. And I put that number up here, and I put the four times seven over here. Quite confusing, but basically, multiply the bottom numbers, and cross multiply. The denominator of the left hand side gets multiplied by the denominator of the right and goes in the right. The denominator of the right hand side multiplies by the numerator of the left hand side and goes in the top left over here. Now I can add these together. I just multiply the tops. That's 15 over 35 plus 28 over 35. 15 thirty-fifths plus 28 thirty-fifths is 43 thirty-fifths, and I'm done. Let's see if we can apply this to algebraic fractions. We've got a fraction here. And firstly, all the way down the page, I'm going to let my equals 2 happen all the way down, uh, for, for a while anyway. I'm not going to do anything to the right-hand side. I'm just going to try and deal with this fraction over here to try and add the two fractions together. 
If adding or subtracting fractions is your aim, make the denominators the same. x minus 2 and x minus 1 definitely go into their product, i.e. x minus 2 times x minus 1. So step 1, I multiply the two denominators together and put that as the denominator of my two, fra of my two parts of the fraction. And I'm doing a plus. Now remember what I said for the next step. x minus 1 ends up getting multiplied across by the 3. So you're going to have a 3 times x minus 1. And you're going to have the 4 times the x minus 2. And all of that's equal to 2. Now I'm going to actually work these things out like I did over here. I worked out the 3 times 5 and worked out the 4 times 7. Here I'm going to expand the brackets. I'll get 3x minus 3 over x minus 2, x minus 1. And I'm going to get 4x minus 8 over x minus 2, x minus 1. All of that is equal to 2. Now I'm going to combine them, like I combined the 15 over 35 plus the 28 over 35. Now I'm going to do this adding. 3x plus 4x is 7x. Negative 3 plus negative 8 is actually negative 11. So I've combined the tops, and now I can put that all over the common denominator, which is x minus 2, x minus 1. Remember, all the way along, this is equal to 2. Now, I'm afraid we've got quite a few steps to go from here. I've got x's on the bottom of this fraction, so I need to remove them by multiplying both sides of the equation by x minus 2, x minus 1. That would leave me with 7x minus 11 on the left-hand side, and my 2 multiplied by x minus 2, x minus 1 on the right-hand side. I've made a transition to a new slide just with the algebra where I am currently and I'm going to finish it off from here. Okay, what will I do to finish it off? Well, let's multiply out the right-hand side. Keep my 2 where it is. Multiply these two brackets. x times x is x squared. Minus 2 times x is minus 2x. Um, then you're going to have uh, another minus x and minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. Just tidying it up, I would have x squared minus 3x plus 2. And lastly, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So I have 7x minus 11 is 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. Okay, we've done so much work so far. This is a huge question. Okay. I've got a quadratic equation out at the end of it. That's why algebraic fractions and quadratic equations are linked in some of these questions. But I can't solve it until I make one of the sides equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 7x off both sides and add 11 to both sides to make the left-hand side zero. And I would get 2x squared minus 7x, uh, 6x minus 7x is minus 13x. And 4 add 11 is 15. I've got a quadratic equation equal to 0. Now I'm going to try and solve it. I'll try always to factorise. This actually does factorise. I'm not going to go through how I got this factorisation. But it factorises to um, the following. Just do the method we usually use and you'll get this. So therefore, on the one hand, 2x subtract 3 is 0, or x subtract 5 is 0. Therefore, 2x is 3, x is 3 over 2, or 1.5, or x is equal to 5. In an exam, again, I would substitute ba these back into the top here and check they work, and they should work, and they will work, um, and that is your answer to this problem. Very, very complicated, many, many steps, and you get a quadratic you've got to solve out at the end of it.